Hi and welcome back to Glassboxed writing automated Java tests using WebDriver. Today we're going to have a look at writing a test for a headless browser. We're going to start by understanding what a headless browser is and why you would want to write a test for a headless browser and then go ahead and write a test for a headless browser. So first things first what is a headless browser? Well as you can see this is a web browser so uh, we have various things on a web browser. Uh, I'm probably not going to go into any <laughs> great detail, but the gist of it is you've got buttons, you've got links, you've got images, you've got text. A headless browser is pretty much the same thing, but we only act on the DOM level. So when our web driver test runs and it tries to find elements on a page, such as an image or a text or a button, it looks for information we pass in traditionally we look for values of attributes which belong to that element on the page and the thing you have to understand is when we look for this information we aren't necessarily looking on the actual page itself no the what we're doing is actually looking at the source of the page or to be more specific the DOM source of the page it's effectively the underlining code of the page that represents the physical look and feel of the page so when we write and run a web driver test to do this what we're doing is actually reading information off the source code of the page so if we navigate to our Java test site and if we right click and have a look at the page source and just expand that when we actually run a web driver test or any kind of test which uses technologies similar to web driver what we're actually doing is more strictly looking at this level of coding, this level of information and by proxy this code allows us to effectively perform actions on the UI frontend of your source code. So now that we have that information what is a headless browser? Well a headless browser is just that is where we are looking at the source code to try and interact with elements without physically running the front end UI front of it. So for instance, let's just say we wrote a test and we saw the user doing various things such as maybe clicking on links and filling in forms so on. When you run a headless test or a headless browser test you don't see the browser at all but you see the test running. What the test is doing is quite literally looking at your DOM or looking at your source code performing all the actions which you've asked it to perform in your test and then when your test finishes gives you a result. So you might ask why would you want to do this? Why would you want to run a headless browser? There are a couple of reasons. The biggest reason is when you have your application running on say some kind of continuous integration environment uh, for instance running on something like Hudson, Jenkins or Bamboo because they're running on effectively a server box you physically don't see anything happening the best thing you can do is actually see logs being produced so if on an environment you physically can't see the browser there's no point taking up resources in trying to run a test with a physical browser in which case you're better off running the test in a headless browser the benefit of doing that is you still get the same output i.e. whatever when your test completes and you get a set of reports or some set of results at the very end it's no different to seeing those very same results in some report format had you run it in a browser instead so that's why you would want to run your test in a headless browser the other benefits you get if you were to say run them locally not on some server is that headless tests tend to be a little bit quicker and a little bit faster another reason why you'd want to do it is let's just say you're just about to submit some code which goes into some kind of uh, environment like bamboo or Jenkins and you're running your test in a browser local to your machine just because you're running your test locally in a browser that doesn't necessarily mean that the same test will pass on some kind of continuous integration environment so what you want to do is make sure that the test will run properly and correctly on an environment where you won't be using a browser in which case you'd want to run the test locally in a headless browser so that's what a headless browser is and that's why you would want to run it locally 
So what we're going to do now is write a really basic test to show you how to effectively translate a browser-based test into a headless browser-based test. And you'll actually be quite shocked in how easy it is to do it. So moving forward, the scenario we're going to automate is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to navigate to, say, the home page. So in this case, uh, this page here. We're then going to go ahead and click on About. And then when we're on the About page, we'll do something like we'll either grab this, this heading text here or this paragraph. Uh, anything really just to give us some confirmation that we're on the page we might not do that we might just get the URL let's just see so I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new test there's none at the moment so right click new class and I'm gonna call this zoo test so I'm gonna go ahead and create a test method And in my test, the first thing I want to do is instantiate the driver. So what this will do is, this will, like we've discussed before, I won't go into too much detail, but this is going to create a new driver and it's going to instantiate it as a Firefox browser. Then I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the site. And the next thing I need to do is, I said we would click on the about link. So it's going to be by ID and then some ID. We'll look for that in a second. So let's go ahead and get the ID. So it's about underscore link. Uh, let's import in this Firefox driver and we said when we're on the about page we're just going to uh, get some basic information so let's just have a quick look to see what's the quickest thing we can get uh, what about this so let's go ahead and try and grab this information here uh, through the paragraph tag and since uh, I assume there's probably only one paragraph tag on this entire page. We should only get this information here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to say uh, string paragraph is equal to uh, driver dot find element by tag name uh, dot get text. and then we're just going to print out this information there you go so nothing really too fancy we're also going to have to import in the test of course it's a JUnit so let's go ahead and run this Okay, the test finished. Uh, let's do a couple of more things so we can manage it a little bit more better. So we're going to close the browser once we're done. Uh, in fact, let's just quit the drive altogether. And if we have a look at the output again, so I'm just going to copy uh, "We love our animals," and I'm going to do an assert statement instead of the system out print line because ideally that's what we should be doing in a test. Sorry, that's supposed to be a contains. There we go. 
So what I'm doing here is I've removed uh, the system out print line entirely because we don't really want that. Uh, we want to do some assertion. And all I'm going to do is get the text and I'm just going to assert that it contains this phrase here. So again, let's quickly run this just to make sure this works. Okay, so that worked. Uh, and it looked like it took just north of 8 seconds, which isn't too bad. So now what we want to do is translate this test into the headless browser test. And, well, c at the moment, by looking at this code, can you guess how one would do that? I'll give you a clue. You need to make one simple code change and one single code change. And that would effectively change this test from using a browser to a headless browser. Uh, for those who've guessed it already, uh, well done. For those who haven't, uh, new thing to learn today. To change this from using a Firefox browser to the headless browser, you change the browser. So if we change it to the headless browser, which is called HTML unit driver, and import it in. So if you notice, it's a selenium.html unit. This will now use the headless browser to run the test. So again, let's right click and run the test. So notice, it's actually run the test. And it's run the test in almost half of that time. So when we run the test using our browser, it took 8 seconds. When we run it in the headless browser, i.e. the HTML unit driver, it took 4 seconds. And we got to green bar, which means it did every other thing that we expected it to do. So for instance, it did click on a link, it did grab the text, and it did do the assertion. So another reason to run the test, because let's face it, when we're running this automated test, this is only a single test. If you have hundreds of tests, if you have potentially thousands of tests, you could potentially cut down the amount of time it takes to run all those tests potentially in half, which is a long time compared to, say, if you were to just run them using a browser. Most of the time when you run the test, you're not physically looking at the browser because, well, the browser is usually too fast for the human eye to actually catch up and see exactly what's happening. So it might not even matter. So running in a headless browser just makes more sense because you can just get all the stuff done almost twice as quickly. So where possible, try and run your test using a headless browser. For the sheer benefit that A, they run much faster and B, automated tests on a CI environment are usually better to run in a headless browser simply because there's nothing to actually physically see. So why run it in a browser when you can run it in a headless browser and save time? So the biggest benefits of, of doing this is on two fronts. First there's benefits which you gain by running this locally and benefits you gain by running this on a CI environment. CI standing for continuous integration. So when you run this on a CI environment, such as Bamboo, Jenkins, Hudson, so on, because you don't physically see it, it makes more sense to run it in a headless browser. It saves you time. When you're running this locally, again, when all the tests are running, unless if you've put in some breakpoints or, or you try and stop the test uh, in mid-execution, you typically can't see what's happening exactly because the browsers are just going too fast. So again, it makes sense to use a HTML unit driver and run your test that way. Tests which take, let's just say, arbitrarily 30 minutes to take might only take 10 minutes to run in a headless browser. And that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching my video. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my latest videos, which are released every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, ciao.